Hey, it's Dennis. Welcome to class one of the advanced form and training. Um, the thing I want you guys to understand is that if you're going to really impress your employer to the point of, you know, boosting your income significantly or, um, you know, even seeking uh, employment somewhere else at a, at a higher level, you need to know and understand the numbers on your project better than they do. And it's not that hard. Um, I'm going to help you do that. Most companies don't do that good of a job at it, honestly. And, um, I'm going to show you how to do a better job than them and I'm going to make it very easy for you. Um, so you should have received an email by now, uh, should have had a, a website and login information. That is for my software, it's web hosted and um, I'm going to go ahead and log in there right now. We're going to start going through that software. Um, I'm basically going to take it to you, take you through it step by step, and I need you to, um, you know, follow along in the video, but also open up the software and go through the same steps I do so that you can learn the software and get comfortable with it so you know where things are and how to, uh, you know, manipulate and operate it um, so that we can start managing projects more profitably and start capturing the data on our projects so that we know our numbers better than the people we work for and when you do that they're definitely going to stand up and notice I promise you that so let me uh, surf on over to the site we'll get the software opened up and we'll start digging into it thanks okay so the website address is constructiontoolware.com this is the software uh, web hosted and uh, I'm just going to put my login credentials in here and we'll get logged in real quick and take a look Okay, so here we are inside. Um, we're basically going to work our way through these tabs uh, pretty much in order. We'll uh, maybe move around just a little bit, but um, we're going to work our way through all of these tabs and we're going to uh, learn how to operate the software. Um, we are going to uh, import data for a sample project so that you can build your own schedule and write two-week rolling schedules, enter time against them, um, do some forecasting, check out some reporting, uh, things like that. And then once I can get you through the software, get you comfortable with it, uh, ideally what will happen is you'll import data for your own project and uh, start managing it and uh, we'll see if we can get your employer's attention. So uh, the first few tabs uh, are pretty simple and basic. Uh, so this will be a pretty easy uh, class right here. And then uh, it'll start getting, you know, progressively more and more in depth. So. Uh, today will be an easy day, but we have to get a little bit of uh, work out of the way just setting up the software uh, for the project. And that's what we're going to start doing right now. 
So uh, as you can see um, under current project right here, there isn't a project listed. It says select a project. Um, I set up a brand new uh, access for myself. Uh, so I'd be, uh, you know, at the same starting level that you are. So there are no projects in here. So we're going to go ahead and add one. Obviously, we're going to click on the Add New Project tab. That will pull up this little form right here, and we're going to give our project a name. And the name I'm going to use is going to be Private School. And the reason I'm calling it Private School is because the sample project we're going to in import data for is uh, actually a private school. So that'll be appropriate. Uh, the status we're going to leave is open. Now you can put your address in here, your square footage if you want, the type of construction, contact name and phone number. But the only two things that are critical on this form is the uh, name of the project and the average labor rate. So uh, a little ways down the road we're going to import uh, data for this project. I don't know uh, off the top of my head what the average labor rate is on the estimate for that project. I haven't looked at it in a while. I, I probably should have. But just for the time being, I'm going to put $25 an hour for my average labor rate in there. And then once we import the data and get to look at the estimate, um, we'll go ahead and adjust that so it matches the actual estimate. But for the time being, I need a placeholder. I'm just going to put 25 in there. And then I'll click Update. And once it updates, so it's all cleared out, I'll close this out. And you can see that the project has been added here. So now we have a one project in our list. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this now and select uh, this project. Obviously, it's the only one in the system. So we'll click Submit. Once I do that, it will be listed right up here. So now, you know, our project is active, okay? Basically, all it has is a name and an average labor rate at this point. Uh, the next tab I want to go over is the Logins tab. So what I did is I gave you all, um, oh, uh, customer, admin, access. So you have the highest level of access to this software. In other words, if I was to license this product to a company, I would make one person in their company the admin. They would have uh, total uh, access over the software. And from there, they can assign new logins to anyone that they want. Now, depending on the size and scope of your project, you may want to provide some of your team with uh, login access. And you're certainly welcome to do that and you have the ability to do that, okay? There are two um, kind of types of logins. One would be like an administrative type of login where you can have access to the software and use it for various things. Uh, the other type would be employee login and all employees can do is log in and enter their time. So it just gives them time entry access. That type of login is done under the employees tab and we'll take a look at that uh, in a minute. But uh, to give someone login access, you can just click uh, Add New Login. And there are three levels of access there. Uh, full access is basically going to give them the same level of access that you have. It's going to give them access to every one of these tabs across the top. So they can, uh, you know, log into the software and basically do anything they want to do, okay? Uh, 
but there are uh, some users that you're going to want to restrict some access for. So one of them generally is the employees tab. And you know, if someone has access to the employees tab, they can get in there, they can see the wage that people are getting paid um, and some personal information. And uh, generally companies don't want all of that shared, okay? We're going to have to have it and you're going to have to get it from them. Um, but we don't want to share that with everyone. We want to keep that hidden. So as long as you don't have access to the employees tab, um, normally you won't be able to access any of that information. So uh, another thing that you might want to do is you might want to restrict them from seeing the phase and task uh, tabs because that would give them the ability Ability to alter your project and you don't want anyone changing your numbers for you um, in the background you want to protect those so that your project you know moves along smoothly and collects the right data okay so if you wanted to restrict their access you could click on limited access and what that'll do is pop up a couple of boxes here one is going to be your project list. Now, what you need to understand, if I highlight this here, you'll see it'll pop up a note and it says, by default, all tabs list in the, listed in this section are shown. So in other words, all of the tabs that are listed right there are accessible. Okay, so only click the ones you want to hide. So if you want to hide a tab from someone, like I said, employees earlier, you want to click on the employee tab. Now it takes that access away from them. Phases and tasks are another one I mentioned. So we can take that away. I may not want someone to have uh, access to my project list or be able to create logins. Um, Maybe I don't want them to be able to see the financial reports, okay? Whatever you want to uh, restrict access to, you just select it here. And then you're going to create a login name. I generally just put their name in here. Username, you can create whatever username you want and give them a password. Uh, after that, um, if this individual if you want them to have access to your purchase orders because you can write purchase orders in this software and I generally do that so I can keep track of my own material uh, if you want them to be able to write and approve uh, purchase orders and you need to click approval here if you'd like them to be able to access the purchase orders but only to edit them and to review them and to receive material in then you'd click edit and if you don't want them to have access to purchase orders at all just click none okay uh, that'll make a lot more sense once we get into the software a little further uh, also, you can give someone permission to enter time for other employees. Sometimes that's a benefit, like a, uh, a lead person could uh, enter the time for the uh, crew members that are underneath them so that you make sure that's accurate. Sometimes it's better to have one a uh, competent person entering time instead of just letting the employees all enter their own time. It's up to you. Uh, if you give your employees access uh, to the software through the employees tab to enter their time, um, they can actually pull it up on a smartphone and just enter their time at the end of the day. If you have good crew members, that's uh, usually a good way to do that as well. But if you want them to have time entry, uh, ability then select it here you can put the address city state zip phone email you can put all of that in if you want you don't really need it all you really need is a username and a password and then click your approvals here make your selections on 
Remember, if you select this right here, they won't have access to this project. Ultimately, you'll have a list of projects in here. Maybe you'll only want them to have access to one, so you would collect, you know, select all of the others. But make your selections, and then you're just going to click Update. So let's just put one in real quick, and we'll just call this person Tom Henry. And we'll make their username Tom Henry. I'll give them a password of 1234 ZZZ exclamation. And um, then I'm just going to click update. Okay, so it tells me that the new login's been added up here. Click OK. And then I can cancel out of here. And you'll see that we have Tom Henry listed here as a new login. And you're welcome to, you know, assign logins to whoever you uh, want to during the course of this uh, exercise and when you use this on your project, okay? Okay, so that's the uh, login information. Um, there is one other thing I wanted to show you I forgot about, but uh, Gantt access only. So a lot of times uh, the customer of my client uh, needs to be able to view my master schedule. So I will give them Gantt access only they can log in. The only thing they'll be able to see is the master schedule so they can track my progress and see how we're doing on the project. So that is a third level of access. It's generally just for customers, but uh, you can assign Gantt, Gantt access only if you want. Okay. Now, um, along with your email, you also received a CSV file, which is a comma-separated file. It's like a, an Excel file. Um, but this program will actually import files, so you can import data in here. And that uh, file is an employee list. So we're going to go through this employee tab real quick and I'll show you how to get some employees in here. Because once we build our sample project, then we're going to have to start assigning tasks to people and we're going to need some employees in there for that, all right? So I'll click on the employees tab and I'm going to add a couple of employees manually. Um, let me just think of a couple of names here. Jones, Sally. I'm not going to worry about addresses and things like that. Uh, there is an eligibility date here. Let me tell you what that does. Um, a lot of times when companies hire new employees, um, their fringe benefits don't kick in for maybe 30, 60, or 90 days, right? It's like a probationary period. So there is no reason for you to um, pay those costs on that employee within your project if they're not getting those benefits, right? So if you put a date in here of when their uh, um, benefits become active, um, on that date, it'll start including those fringe benefit costs, okay? Um, also, there's labor burden. So your employer, along with your fringe benefits, also has to pay certain taxes. Um, for employees, um, and that's called labor burden. And we uh, need to capture those costs because every hour they're not just paying a wage, they're also paying like Social Security 
and some probably some state taxes on that employee, maybe some federal taxes, FICA. Um, so we need to determine what that burden rate is. And for different companies, it's different. It's a different cost uh, because of uh, maybe some equipment they might, um, you know, include in the position or uh, just uh, different states have different tax rates and things like that. So that is a number you're gonna have to get from your employer. If you talk to the payroll person, they ought to be able to tell you what the labor burden is. Um, if you can't get it that way, you can calculate it pretty closely online. And uh, maybe uh, as we get further in, if anyone needs me to, I can do a class on that just to show you how to calculate that to get real close. Closer we get, more accurate your numbers are going to be, right? Now that can be entered uh, either as a percent or a dollar amount. Typically it's entered as a percent and it can be different for, you know, different people within the company, but if you get a good close average, you know, you'll be in the, you'll be real close in the ballpark. I'm just going to put 35% in here um, for that. Now, this is where you would be able to enable them web login if you want them to be able to enter their own time. You could just uh, give them a username. and then give them a password. And uh, you can also give them master time uh, entry access here as well as the last uh, login we did. Now, the other thing you're gonna need to do is give them a classification. There are some uh, pre-built classifications in here you'll see uh, Apprentice 1, Apprentice 2, 3, 4, 5. The reason these are in here is because um, in the middle of a project it's possible for someone to get a raise, right? So you need to start tracking them at that new uh, rate of pay. So if they were an Apprentice 3, for example, what you do is create a new classification as Apprentice 4 enter in that dollar amount uh, that you know that their uh, new wage represents and then the project the software will start tracking them at that higher wage uh, so you know you can use these right here or you can make up your own just click add new and you can enter any classification that you want right there okay um, I'm just going to select an apprentice for and I think I'll, you know, this is where you'll enter their actual wage. Um, make this person maybe $15 an hour for the sake of argument. Okay. And then I'm going to click update. And then I'm going to click down here, update add. Okay. So that's how employees get entered in manually. And you can do that. You'll see if I close that out, we now have a uh, new employee entered in, Sally Jones. Um, back to the file that I sent you, the employee file, the CSV file. If you just want to import that list in, what you do is click on, you know, import employee file right here. And so what you could do is have your accounting person um, just spit you a file out of the accounting software um, with your entire list of uh, company employees and you can import that right in and now you can select from any employee in the company. A lot of times um, as you build a project, different employees are cycling in and out, right, moving through or whatever. Um, so it's nice to have that whole total list in there, but it's not 
necessary. You can just manually enter um, the names of uh, the people who are actually on your project if it's a smaller project. Okay, so I'm going to choose the file, and to do that, I'm going to go to uh, Downloads, and there's my file right there. I'll just uh, click Open. Now it's been uh, imported, so I'm going to go ahead and upload it. Here's what it looks like. Uh, labor burdens, 35%. Here's the classification. There's the wage and the name. I'm going to commit this data, click OK. Once I do that, I can go back to my employee tab and you'll see that all of those are entered in. Now I have, you know, an entire crew in here to select from. Okay, so uh, it's up to you if you want to bother the, the person in uh, HR. I would say, uh, depending on how big your project it is, is sometimes it's a lot of entry. But uh, the point is this, um, you need to know who your crew is, you need to know their hourly wage, and you need to know the labor burden. So that's a hurdle you'll have to get over. Um, if you've never asked for that information, your company might go, well, what do you want that for? And what I would tell them is, hey, uh, you know, I have some software. I want to track my numbers on this project so that I can make sure that I make you money. And it's very important that I have those, um, you know, the wages of the people who are out here. Plus, I need to make sure I'm meeting my average labor rate. I don't want to exceed my average labor rate. Um, and that'll make some sense to them, okay? Uh, but you're going to have to have that discussion and they just have to give it to you, period. You should not be expected to manage a project for anybody without knowing the wages that your crews are making. And if they have a problem with it, you know, they kind of need to get over it, okay? <laughs> you need those numbers. Now, the burden, you know, if, uh, if that's too much for them, we can work through that um, just by uh, calculating it for the state and city and, you know, that you're in. Um, we can get real close on that without them. But uh, if they'll give it to you, it's just another part of the equation solved. Um, that it will be all of the sensitive data that you need. After that, it's going to be you know, all project related data and they ought to be grateful that you want that data. So, um, you know, we'll take a look at that in a future video. Okay, so um, I think I've gone on long enough. What I'd like you to do now is uh, log into the software, Set a, open up a project, give it a name, give it an average labor rate, $25 an hour. Uh, go into the logins, create a fictitious login for someone, maybe your wife or your husband or your brother or whoever. Um, and then go ahead and go in and manually set up one of your employees and then import that employee list that I gave you so you have a good uh, employee roster there. This is what we'll use for our, our sample project. Uh, next week uh, we'll go over uh, phases and uh, tasks, um, basically going to uh, import some more data for the project and then it'll break it up by phase and task. We'll take a look at that stuff. After that, we can start building our schedule. So it'll start moving pretty fast now. And uh, this will just be a nice, easy start for everyone. Okay, thanks again, guys. Looking Really looking forward to working with you. Um, stick with me. I know I'm going to be able to open some eyes in your company and get you some recognition. Okay, thanks a lot.